so I have no Pokeballs. There's a lot of Pokestops, and none of the Pokestops are working. And I can't get a Pokeball because there's a War Turtle here, and I'm gonna try to get it. I just got it. He just got it. Juan's in panic mode. I'm in panic mode. I missed the Taurus. I missed the Dragonite, and I'm not about to miss the War Turtle. What's up trainers? We're here in Long Beach, California. And today we're trying to answer a question we asked yesterday. Do Pokemon caught at lure modules have higher IVs than Pokemon caught normally? Before we go any further, I should probably explain IVs. In Pokemon Go, every Pokemon has three base stats, attack, defense, and stamina. These stats are predetermined and set for every species. So for example, every Bulbasaur has the exact same base stats. IV stands for individual value, and it's a modifier to these base stats. They can range from 0 to 15, and they're random and completely different for every Pokemon you catch. IVs get added to base stats, so if you have a Bulbasaur with perfect IVs, its stats would each be 15 points higher than a Bulbasaur with zero IVs. On average, Pokemon with perfect IVs are about 10% stronger than their counterparts with zero IVs, and 5% stronger than the average Pokemon of that species. First thing we need to do to test out the series, capture a bunch of Pokemon. It's Sunday afternoon, and all the Pokestops seem to have lures activated. We're also going to compare Pokemon hatched from eggs and caught with incense, so to do that, we're also going to need to do a bunch of walking. All right, Pier Point Landing. This is the spot we're gonna post up here with everyone else because it's in range of three different lures. We just caught, I have no idea how many Pokemon. A lot. A lot. So now we're going to try to hatch some eggs, put on an incense, walk around, and maybe catch some regular Pokemon. We'll see you guys on the walk. Okay. We just walked in a circle. Juan got some Pokeballs. And now it's time to try it, round two. Don't forget to use your raspberries. No, I ran out. I ran out again, round two, it's a failed attempt. Oh my god. And I didn't use the raspberry again. Oh. Third attempt fails. We've been walking around for a while. It was already time for me to fill up the meter, so we just came back and I have all my eggs ready incubated and they're it's about time to hatch. It's perfect because we need this information for our research. That's right. So we can't, we can't, we gotta take it as is. It's happening guys, I hope that's not too annoying. Now we're back at my car. Now we're back at my car because we've been playing for hours, the phones are dying, and it's time to recharge. We got the Voltorb in the backpack and we are recharging. We've been out here for hours and we've done our research. We caught a bunch of Pokemon, hatched a few eggs, and it's time to take this data back to the lab for analysis. I'm back at the lab, but I need a few more data points, so I'm gonna head out and hatch a few more eggs and throw on another incense. 
If you missed our episode about items, the way incense works is that it spawns a Pokemon every five minutes if you're standing still, but a Pokemon will spawn every one minute if you're moving at a speed of more than 200 meters per minute. That works out to about miles an hour, so you have to be moving pretty fast to make that happen. I'm here at the park right now for some light, but what I'm planning on doing is heading out to the street and just skating up and down in straight lines. The reason I'm doing that rather than skating in circles or any other type of pattern is because the game calculates distance once per minute. It checks with the server to see where you are in relation to one minute ago and draws a straight line for your distance. So if you're traveling in zigzags or in circles, it'll register a lot less distance than you've actually traveled. So, when it comes to hatching eggs, you want to be moving in straight lines. I skated up and down the street for a while and I was just going too fast. So I started slow rolling through the park and the eggs are hatching. I'm back at the lab and I just finished running the numbers. Before I share the results, I want to talk about my methods. While I still recommend the IV calculator at pokeassistant.com when you're looking at individual Pokemon, in order to save myself time and get more accurate results, I used a different method. For this experiment, I used a proxy that reads network traffic between your app and Niantic servers to find the exact IVs of all your Pokemon. It's a complicated process, but if you're interested in learning how it works, let me know and I can make a video tutorial. For now, I've linked to a text tutorial in the description. Our sample for this experiment includes 19 Pokemon attracted by lures, 22 Pokemon attracted by incense, 28 Pokemon who spawned normally, and 9 Pokemon who hatched from eggs. In order to compare the groups, I'm looking at the percent perfection of their IVs. A Pokemon with perfect 15 IVs in each stat is considered 100% perfect, while 0 in all stats would be 0% perfect. So let's take a look at the results. Our Lord Pokemon group averaged about 47% perfection. The incense group averaged 49% perfection, and our normal spawns averaged 52%. It turns out there's no significant difference in the IVs of Pokemon caught from normal spawns, incense, or lures. Pokemon hatched from eggs, however, averaged 87% perfection, so the only surefire way to get a Pokemon with above average IVs is to hatch it from an egg. So I hope that answers the question, how do I find Pokemon with higher IVs? We really enjoy doing research like this for you guys, so if you have any suggestions on topics you want us to look into, go ahead and leave them in the comments below. As always, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next episode. Obviously, we're in the middle of the city right now, but something weird's going on because the Pokestop here, with the lure on it, keeps spawning water-type Pokemon. We've seen Goldeen, and now a Krabby. So this is another thing we're gonna have to look into in the future. What determines the Pokemon attracted to a lure on a Pokestop? We just ran into another water-type in the exact same spot, and it was a Nominite and I'm gonna make sure I catch it. Something weird is definitely going on with this Pokestop. If you're in LA, and you're looking for water-type Pokemon, Come put a lure over here on the How and Nosem mural.